I'm really excited today because my seed orders came. Got a couple already, smaller ones, but bigger one from William Dam Seeds and my Jiffy Pots. I'd like to try some of these. But uh, Vassy's definitely has the best deal for uh, uh, Jiffy Pots wholesale. <laughs> About 800 in this case. cents or a piece or something like that. I think I worked it out to be last year so you know it's not much more uh, to plastic. I usually use the plastic ones uh, for the ones on the farm. It starts on the farm because I just keep reusing them but for sale it's great to use uh, biodegradable containers. All right that's all the new seed for this year. chili. And this is 72 flat. A really large hole in the bottom. You can see that. Great for bottom feeding. So I bought a bunch of this here. All right, we're gonna plant in some flowers today, some perennial and some annual. We got a uh, Gazinia Kiss Mix, it's an annual. Opens and closes with the uh, light and the dark each day. And we have a Scalardia, uh, it's a perennial. Uh, really beautiful blooms, looks like a sunflower. Grows about two feet high tops. A couple of those. Got nasturtium, dwarf jewel mix. I'm going to start those uh, a little bit later. Now we got zinnias, a variety of zinnias, and candy cane, got some speckles and stripes, and then some giant zinnia. It's a really good deal. This Italian seed, you get a lot of seed, and it's often pretty good quality, I find. And so, and some straw flowers. And whirl ensign. It's a um, navy blue and cream centered compact dwarf morning glory. That's exciting. And then we're also going to be planting some herbs, some winter savory, some sage, some stevia, uh, Russian tarragon, which is a perennial. And that's about it. And we're going to plant all these this evening. So it looks like it's going to just do this tray perfectly. 72, oh, about 75 seed in there. Pretty good for 250. And a cane zinnia is planted. Yeah, so we got King of North pepper that I saved last year. Let's screw a nice big patch of King of North away from the other varieties quite a ways. And I think it turned out really nice. A couple new varieties of tomato this year. 
We got Prudence Purple. It's an early, especially for such a large tomato. Deep pink, meaty fruits are up to 450 grams, about one pound. The sweet, rich taste that is often compared to brandy wine. The fruits have a silky texture and few seeds. And we also got Sasha's Alte. Voted one of the 10 best early tomatoes uh, by Organic Magazine. It's extremely early for a full size slicer. Slightly flattened bright red tomato comes from Sasha, who's grown them in the Altai Mountains of Siberia. Extraordinarily sweet, juicy, and blemish free. 59 days. Grown a bunch of those ones. More tomato seeds. We got Juliet Hybrid. I hear really good things about this one. First year growing it, AAS the winner. It's a grape tomato. Just finished planting this stevia seed called Candy, and the seed is ridiculously small. It's supposed to have 150 seeds in there. So this one tray, I put about almost two seeds in every in every one. Yeah, that would work out about right. 14 bucks. If I get 50 nice plants, I'll be happy. Hey, <laughs> good morning. It's the 12th of March, and I just wanted to share some of the different ways I like to start uh, my seedlings. A good way of uh, keeping your seeds moist till they germinate is just stacking up your trays. Got the 72 insert tray in a nice, uh, like five times thick um, bottom tray. And you stack these up, you can go, I've stacked them like about eight, um, high before. Um, that's a great space saving way of doing it. You can stick them by your fire inside your house or, or just up off the ground is usually pretty good if it's you know about 60 to 70 degrees. And uh, just cover the top one with a dome or something else. Or a, a tray just flipped upside down. Sometimes I use that if I don't have any dome. Or these are ready. Gotta get these under light now. But they're okay, you know, for even a day they could be okay. Uh, the sooner the better. Keep them nice and low to the to the earth. And so I do really like the lower profile trays here. These are really great because you can get a lot in stacking them if you don't have much space. So these uh, units pull out and they have the lighting attached to them. They just slide in so they have different uh, levels. So for initial uh, germination, I <coughs> layer them quite uh, close together. That's why I like to use this low profile uh, dome here. And you know, for a while I was just propping them up I like that because they don't have venting. Um, but what you want to do is drill some holes in the top. That way your uh, dome can stay on nice and straight and square really well and uh, yeah four days in we got some gazinia kiss mix popping beautiful flower that opens and closes with the light and the dark and uh, yeah so we got these larger domes here which are a little bit pricey they have this venting on the top um, these are really nice and high good for cloning not so ideal for seed starting if I'm because you have to have your unless you have a lot of space in a big setup then you know but once they pop you do want to get the light really close to the seedling. And what I do, another reason I like to stack them so closely is that I can provide some bottom heat. Ideally most seeds it's ideal just to add some bottom heat and no top light unless it's a seed that requires light and you can also cover your trays with some saran wrap. I found uh, this roll of packing wrap that I had from years back and I uh, already spent quite a bit of money this year on seed starting so did some saran wrap on the trays here. You have to be careful that it doesn't heat up too much cook them easily with this I found so minimal light or no light on top um, is best when using the saran wrap I found um, 
And it's pretty good because you can just roll it back halfway if you got a different variety of seed or um, you know, different variety. Uh, it takes longer to germinate. Or some come up and some don't. Right? I see most people just using about two lights per level, um, which carries about four, well, four trays. Sometimes you can sneak a fifth one in there, but that's pretty good. Um, which two is enough for germination, I find. But you really want to go for four. These are Sun Blasters, uh, 54 watt high output fluorescence. Um, that is ideal for them for nice strong growth. Keep your plants nice and stocky. You want to drop these really low to the plant within a couple inches so that you can get uh, so you don't get elongation. And at this point, just for the initial germination. Usually you just have this fan in direct airflow so they don't dry out, which sometimes I do apply a bit more moisture, but it's best if you can hit it right on where soaking of the medium um, and the planting of the seed and then covered and sprouting all at all in one time and not reapplying uh, too much moisture. You can get rot. Um, if that happens or if you get too much drying and then you add more water a number of times You know you get mixed results sometimes it goes too far and your, your seed is uh, Is done So initially for starting let's put uh, worm castings on your list of worm castings and certified organic uh, pro mix, low perlite, mycorrhiza, and we do about, we've been doing four scoops, four to one basically. Keep it simple, and then when they pop up a little bit later, couple weeks in I start giving them some a uh, little bit of this uh, organic uh, natural fertilizer 325 it's basically a fish emulsion that's been ha has some other additives to it uh, like uh, kelp and a little rock phosphate and uh, I like to use a little ocean magic sometimes for foliar spray all right so the lights are off in the grow room here and uh, just giving everybody a nice foliar spray some ocean magic. Nice zinnias. Roots are already going hydroponic. This Russian tarragon is looking pretty good. It's a perennial. Tastes different than uh, French tarragon. That's about it for this video. 